Hello and welcome. It's Fiona here from Spirit Child Journey and we are thelightworkers.com.au here for your August 26, uh, 2018 full moon energy update. Now, I wasn't going to record this until the actual full moon. We're a couple of days early now um, and that is because I am actually going to be on the road and under the full moon, camping out under the full moon in a couple of days. So I was going to wait until then just so we could actually see the moon as well. But I've had a lot of requests and a lot of very common um, questions and feedback from a range of different clients at the moment. So I wanted to record this one a little bit early because it seems like the energy of the full moon has already hit. So I thought we'll get this one out for you guys and then hopefully we'll do a little update on the road as well. So apologies. No fancy background, I am surrounded by boxes and ready to hit the road tomorrow. But a really important time this full moon because it's it's kind of the ending of all of that huge eclipse cycle that we've had um, pretty well for the entire year so far. But definitely in the last few weeks and the last few cycles, we've had solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, another uh, solar eclipse I think, we've had planets in retrograde, we have had, you name it, the fact that we are all still here, still kicking on and if you're feeling good, even more props to you because there is so much going on energetically at the moment and it's all in this wonderful um, stage of bringing us to our highest purpose and really opening the portals. So. This weekend's full moon is uh, in Pisces. Now, the really fun thing about Pisces, it's the two fish. So for me, whenever I think about it, I do always think about yin and yang. I do always think about, um, I guess, finding the balance between the masculine and feminine, internal and external. Um, really things, you know, light and dark, good and bad. The things that we are taught are opposites and yet they are so complementary to each other. And that's what I really enjoy about the energies of this moon. Now, I enjoy it because I've done a lot of clearing out and letting go, and that's the theme that I'm noticing. As the portals are opening at the moment, they are giving us that connection with our highest self and really allowing the light to come in and shine and remind us what we are here for. Remind us of the purpose that's in our heart, what we committed to do, the intention we came to this earth to be part of. And yet over the years since we were born or since conception, that has become a little bit covered up with a layer of shoulds and a little bit of crud, I call it, which is all about the the you know the traumas or the bad moments or the negative emotions that have been suppressed instead of expressed. Um, the things that should have been said that you just didn't feel like you could say. Um, all of the things that have been covering up that beautiful light within us. All of those shoulds, we should get a good job, we should go to uni, we should, 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 should. All of that is being exposed right now. Now, another thing about the Pisces energy is the attention to detail. And it's a very much, it can be the energy of nitpicking. Um, it can be the energy of um, almost that uh, fixation. So kind of that Asperger's focus without ever being able to distract um, and very black and white thinking. Now, where this is a good thing with this full moon is as we know with the full moon, it brings stuff up. And it brings it up for clearing. So when we think about nature, the full moon makes the water rise. And when the water levels rise, the earth is looser and it is easier to pull out things. So that's why the farmer's almanac says pull out the stumps in the full moon. So as it all rises up, it feels like it's getting worse. It feels like there's so much more emotion there than there ever was before. It's not. It was always there. We've just been pushing it down. So when it comes to full moon, it just makes it that much easier to clean stuff out because it's already coming up. So you don't have to go find it. You just have to look at it, be willing to look at it and be willing to go, do I want this to stay with me or do I want to get this stump out of the ground? So really use the energy as it comes up to clear it all out. Now, I love to think about it in terms of the old fashioned scales. So when we think about, you know, the old fashioned scales where there's a, um, you know, if you weight one side or you weight on the other side and it gets out of balance. So when we're thinking about this, 
think about it in terms of say we've got some negativity well what we call negative emotions like anger sadness guilt uh, resentment hurt hatred now there are no negative emotions all emotions are good and healthy because they are an indication that something is wrong with no however we've labeled them as negative in society we've been taught that they are negative and bad and don't go near those emotions so it can be different for everybody um, in some cases girls are allowed to cry but not get angry boys are allowed to get angry but not cry whatever is going on for us inside of us emotionally if we think about it in terms of that stuff we'll call it the baggage that's been suppressed so whatever you weren't allowed to express it's going down on one side of the scale so whether that's traumatic events whether that's um, just little things that have gone wrong whether that's grief that you haven't expressed but it's weighing that side of the scales down now if we look at a scale that's out of balance because there's heavy stuff on this side, then there's, there's two ways to balance the scale. The first way is what most people think, which is let's add some positive to this side. And this is what generally happens in the self-help industry is let's go add some more stuff. So now we're going to do positive affirmations and we're going to go to the gym every day and we're going to listen to positive music and we're going to think positively and do gratitude journals. And it's just adding more to this side of the scales, which does for some people bring it into balance. But what can happen is that it can get very difficult because if there's a lot on this side, when we start to add on this side, what can happen is either we can't find enough good stuff to outweigh, like this is too heavy, or um, every, as we add more and more, it becomes kind of precariously balanced. And you think about if you put too many things on, it's balanced or it's hard to maintain. So if every day you have to think positively, you have to do affirmations, you have to go to the gym, you have to, and, and there's no gray area, there's no room for a bad day, what happens in the full moon and particularly the energies we've had with the eclipses um, and the retrograde so the planets going into retrograde we've had six planets go into retrograde which basically means that they are going backwards and going back over old ground um, that retrograde is all about throwing things off balance it's kind of throwing a spanner in it's it's reflecting on it causing us forcing us to look at stuff so if your pile on this side is, is positive stuff, but it's precariously balanced, whenever a retrograde comes up, it's shaking it. And so stuff starts to fall off. And that's where miscommunication can occur. That's where a whole bunch of stuff can, you know, go wrong. Um, or the reflection adds more weight to this side because it brings it up again. And when you're looking at it, it's like it's heavier again. And so what's going on is what we thought was balanced is actually just precarious because it's only balanced when we're constantly not looking at this side and putting positive things on this side. So that can be a real challenge and difficult to maintain. And it's why really positive people crack. It's why, you know, we look at everyone that's really positive on the outside and then maybe they commit suicide or maybe they crack or they have a midlife crisis or something goes wrong and it's because it was just it was never sustainable it was always the external stuff that they were reliant on to keep this this in check so there's that other way to balance the scales so there's nothing on the scales so they're out of balance right all we have to do is take stuff off this side if we really actually remove negativity from that side of the scale, then it's going to naturally bring the scales back into equilibrium because all scales are balanced in the beginning. It's only once we start to put stuff on them that they get out of balance. It's not balanced in the beginning. Your scales are broken, but we are all born pure. We're all born balanced. Okay. So what happens is, what we need to do is utilize the energy of the full moon, utilize what's coming up. And instead of just ignoring it and hoping it'll go back down again, look at it, face it, own it. it accepting that it is real is the only way that you can get rid of it. Because if you're ignoring it and hoping it'll go away, it's still there. Just because you're ignoring it, it's still there. That's like ignoring gravity. I don't like gravity, it still works. 
We have to accept that it works and then find a way around it. Like the Wright brothers built planes. Yeah, gravity works. I can still fly. Don't have wings, can still fly. We have to accept it and then find a way around it or accept it and remove it in this case. But if we don't accept that it exists, if we don't face it, if we're constantly going through life going, it'll go away, it'll go away, it'll go away, it'll constantly keep coming up. So there's a process that I've been taking some of my clients through and it's not to be taken lightly. This can be a very challenging process. Um, it can be very um, exhausting process. It can be very scary for some people. If you've never faced your emotions, it can be quite scary. And the process is called, I'm calling it, expressive wallowing. What? Yeah, expressive wallowing. Now, do this in a controlled environment. Like, make sure that you're safe when you're doing this. If you need some insight, speak to a coach, speak to a friend. But essentially, it's picture the opening scene out of Bridget Jones' diary. Anyone. You know the scene where she's um, quite drunk, cigarettes and alcohol are optional. She's eating shit food, she's wearing tracksuit pants, her hair's a mess, she doesn't care, she's singing at the top of her lungs and she's letting it all out. Now the point of expressive wallowing is to be completely into the moment of expressing whatever emotion is that needs to get out of you. Now if it's anger, Please be mindful, be safe when you're doing this. Same with sadness, be safe when you're doing this. Um, a dear client of mine had the best suggestion ever for anger. She had toys and she took it out on the toys because the condition with expressive wallowing is that no one external can be involved. Maybe your coach, but you can't do drunk dialing. You can't express it to the person. If you wanna tell them shit, record it, but don't send it. Write it down, but don't send it. The point is not that they hear. The point is that you get it out of your body because it's just a trapped emotion and it's weighing down your scales. So that it's really about getting it out and it doesn't even need to make sense. You know, it can just be blowing it out. So taking a deep breath in and just blowing out negative energy. It can be, my, my favorite is to find some great power ballads and depending on what you've got to express, whether it's anger or whether it's sadness or hurt or hatred or frustration or resentment, there's a song for it. There's a song for pretty well everything and somebody else has already worked out the lyrics and so playlists, go and find some music that triggers you and makes you yell it at the top of your lungs. Find the lyrics on YouTube. The other thing is movies, you know, Find, if you need sadness, go The Notebook. It's the classic one. Um, if you if you want to yell at people, just observe a movie and yell at them. You know, it's but it's getting it out of your body because the trapped emotions are just stuck. They are stagnant energy. And trapped emotions cause pain. They cause illness. This is, is all caused by trapped emotions. So we've got to get them out of our body. And this cycle that we've been through with the eclipses, with the moons, with the um, retrogrades and everything that's going on, it's giving us an opportunity to get back to our pure love, light, innocence and joy that we were all came into this world with. So as the portals align, it's going to be calling you. It's going to be, uh, there's something bigger. It's time to honour it. There's a lot of change going on in our planet right now. We are here for a reason and it's time to act on it. But you can't act on it while you're constantly weighed down. Always positive is like putting hot air, balloon, uh, hot air in a hot air balloon, but not undoing the tethers from the ground. You've got to face that the anchors are still there. Go down there, go into the depths, set yourself a time. Don't do it in front of people that you're afraid to break. Go and check into a hotel. Kick them out of the house, have a shout, whatever you need to do to be re really safe. Junk food is mandatory. Cigarettes and alcohol are optional, but do the thing to get it out. Stop trying to cover it all up. Just get it off your scales. Find the thing that you haven't grieved yet and grieve it. Um, maybe that's an identity. Maybe that's a loss of a job. Maybe it's a little thing. Maybe it's a huge thing. 
Um, if you need support, reach out to a coach, reach out to a safe friend that can't break in this process. Partners tend to get scared. They tend to think they've got to fix it. It's not about fixing it. It's genuinely, you will be okay. When you empty this out, you will be okay, but you've got to let it be okay. Fall apart for a little bit and then pull yourself together. So please feel free to get in touch. As I said, remember to be safe with this one, but it's all coming up anyway. So don't just keep being positive and trying to add more to your scales because the more you add, the harder it is to balance. and You've got a juggling act going on and it's constantly at risk of falling over. Instead, don't be positive for a while. Just allow yourself to feel shit and let it all out. Just cry it all out, express it all out, yell it, scream it, sing it all out. Not externally, no drunk dialing, no drunk texting, write it down, record it, whatever you have to do, and then go to sleep. And the next time you wake up, you'll feel a bit better. Be kind and gentle to yourself. Go to sleep again. The next time you wake up, you'll begin to feel like you're moving forward positively. It will pass. This too shall pass. This is a wonderful weekend to clean off the scales because then when you do, the next time all this stuff comes up, it's not your crappy stuff. It's the good stuff. It's the purpose. It's the mission. You get so inspired around full moon time. It's like inspiration won't stop. Ideas keep coming. It is such a wonderful place to get to. But first, release the past. Let it go. You've got to put down what's on this side. Stop carrying it around. Even if it is their fault, even if it is them to blame, you carrying it around is you continuing the punishment. It's not fair. It's not fair on you. Put it down. Let it go. Let it all out and be the joy, the love, the light. Be the energy you were born to be. It is okay. We are safe now to bring our love and light to the world. So look forward to embracing it, expanding it. Reach out if you need some support and enjoy this weekend. Enjoy the new process and enjoy letting go. Take care of you, take care of others and take care of the good, greater good. Bye for now.